Yo, 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 what's going on, good people? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. This is the Destination Debbie program, and I am your host, Ray G. You can find me on Twitter at Ray GQ. If this is your first time checking out the show on YouTube, smash the subscribe button and check out all the other content. If this is your first time listening, if you're a first time listener, or even if you're not, but you know, you like to listen to the shit in the car, then subscribe to the podcast as well. This is a member of the DLF family of podcasts, very grateful for them. But this is the All Gas Show, powered by FTN Family. Fantasy, go over to ftmfantasy.com for all of your daily and fantasy football, basketball, baseball, tennis, hockey, soccer, badminton, fighting, all of those needs. FTM Fantasy has you covered, but we are back, and so is the Big Ten. The Big Ten is back. The Pac-12 is talking about they're going to be back. The MAC is talking about they're back. College football, baby. We, we got it. I mean, I was halfway right that there wasn't going to be a season. I was halfway right that players were going to opt out. We did. We did, and some did. Some came back some teams did some didn't but damn it we got some football it's crazy right because you know these these teams are here but then they're they're canceling games they're postponing games it's just a wild ass season all the way around it is wild we are coming off of a week two massacre in the NFL. I touched on it briefly in the previous episode. And I, I, I mean, damn, man, CMC high ankle sprain, Barkley out for the season, Bosa out for the season. This is just, it was just brutal across the board. And then you've got players not looking the same. Drew Brees is looking mighty regular without slant guard Mike to throw the ball to. Hey, man, Las Vegas Raiders, Las Vegas Raiders. If you don't know, I am from Vegas. Never thought we would have a pro team, so I'm pretty damn pumped that Derek Carr was out there cooking, and I called him Crock-Pot Carr because he's slow and steady, baby. Five-yard outs, five-yard in routes, comeback route. Just get the ball to Darren Waller, and Josh Jacobs is an absolute monster. I tweeted it out. My top five running backs rest of the season as we stand right here in week two. Aaron Jones, you got to have him at the top of the at the top of the totem pole right now. They need to go ahead and pay the man. Zeke Elliott, Alvin Kamara. I got Josh Jacobs four. And then surprise, surprise, I got JT at five. I know some people were, oh man, Ray, Miles Sanders, man, Nick Chubb. Fantastic talents. I probably have those guys right after those big five. But Jacobs is an absolute monster. His involvement in the passing game. The Raiders offense looks good. It looks better than it has in the past, and I'm very optimistic for those Raiders. But, but in this show today, this episode, we are going to talk about the Big Ten bounce back and what that means for us in Dynasty. Some players who really, really, really needed this season to happen. They got it, man. They got it. And we did see that one of my highest rated players in Debbie, one of my top wide receivers in the 2021 class, Rashad Bateman, said he wants back in. We saw Sean Wade, cornerback from Ohio State, say he wants back in. He is back. NCAA better not do anything with those kids. Let them play. This season has been wild. Everything has been wild in 2020 and it's going to continue to be crazy. But we are going to jump into my top five or six or seven. I don't know however many players who are most likely to benefit right now as it stands from this October 24th start date for the Big Ten Conference. We're going to jump into that gas, baby, right after we hear a word from my man, Gus Johnson. Drop the intro, baby. You got barbecue back there, and you didn't invite me. Hurt my feelings. All right, let's pull out the, you know, the composition, and let's get into my top five players who definitely needed this season to continue to boost their draft stock, talk about how I think they're going to perform in this eight-game season schedule, not including the college football playoffs. We'll see how that all plays out. But I think we have to start at the running back position, and they are two guys who I felt like desperately needed this season to show NFL scouts, evaluators, and teams that they could be an early-round selection and potentially be a running back of the future for an NFL team. And one of the hottest names throughout this entire offseason from the end of last college football season up until the spring was Penn State's running back Journey Brown. Journey Brown, the rising junior, everybody has just been on this Journey Brown train. Some people have him as high as number two in the 2021 class. I do not have Journey Brown ranked that high right now. On tape, he's got the talent, right? You know, he's he's one of those players who put up monster 
production in high school. I think there was one game where he had like 700 rushing yards in a game and 10 touchdowns, like no BS. That was a legitimate stat line from Journey Brown in high school. State champion in the 100 meter dash. It's been reported that the dude can run sub 4-3. We all know that the correlation of fantasy points in 40 yard dash time is uh, not much whatsoever, but when you have a running back who does possess elite speed, it does open up things for the offense and allows for certain players to have that kind of home run hitting ability, and Journey Brown can absolutely do that, and he's got the requisite size at 5'11", 215 pounds, had over 800 rushing yards last season. What do you do? Caught 13 passes for 134 yards, 12 TDs. I have him ranked number six right now in the 2021 class. My rankings over on patreon.com forward slash all gas. Players that I like ahead of Journey Brown, just a little bit because I, I made some adjustments. I told the patrons that I was making some adjustments and I do this in real time. The database is dope. I, I'm, I'm telling you guys, listen, if you want to stay ahead of the game, you need to go become a patron. Be a member of the squad. How I build this stuff out, it, it's really slick and, and intuitive. But my top five guys, we all know the big three, ETN, Hubbard, and Najee Harris. At four, I've got Kenneth Gaines. Well, and a big riser for me is Cameron Harris out of, out of Miami. I have him as my fifth ranked running back in the 2021 class. But right now, after Harris, it is Journey Brown. And I think this season is going to be extremely telling for Brown. I think absent the Big Ten returning, I don't think Journey Brown was going to declare. We didn't hear anything about him opting out in order to declare. I think he was going to return again to play and prove to NFL scouts and evaluators that he can be a feature back at the next level. So when you're talking about this season, these eight games being some of the most important games for players for our dynasty leagues, big time, big time chance and opportunity for Journey Brown to step up and show these people that he actually can be a feature back because I want to see it. I want to see it again. Penn State has another running back, five-star recruit Noah Kane, who started off last season injured battled some injuries throughout the season but he is extremely talented and I still am personally pretty damn high on Noah Kane in my in, in my Debbie rank so really want to see Journey Brown continue to work on not just relying on his athletic ability but becoming a more instinctual running back I think these eight games uh, are going to be absolutely critical and crucial for Journey Brown but definitely his stock is on a rise this is good for Journey Brown as well as another running back from a, a, a rival school, I guess you would say, the Ohio State University, Trey Sermon. I know Trey Sermon is breathing a sigh of relief because he leaves Oklahoma, transfers to Ohio State. Him and Justin Fields are going to be, you know, that that was the, the backfield pairing. We saw what Justin Fields and J.K. Dobbins were able to do last season. I know they have Master Teague, Steel Chambers. They brought in some young guys, but they brought Trey Sermon in for a reason. And we haven't really seen Trey Sermon's full capabilities, if that's how you want to call it, since his sophomore season at Oklahoma. And in in that season, Sermon at six foot one, two twenty, uh, one hundred sixty four carries, nine seventy four and 13, 12 receptions. So this was big. Sermon was hurt last year. Sermon was hurt. Was in the doghouse. I don't know what the hell happened, but he could never usurp Kennedy Brooks, who opted out of Oklahoma. So part of it was. Damn, if the Big Ten was really going to be away from football this year and Sermon leaves Oklahoma to go to Ohio State, they don't play. Kennedy Brooks opts out. It's like, damn, I should have stayed at Oklahoma. But the Big Ten is back, and this is a huge opportunity for Trey Sermon, who possesses prototype ideal NFL size. He's got ideal NFL skill set. He reminds me personally of a poor man's TJ Yeldon. They sort of are gliders. He's not the most bursty and explosive athlete. There's definitely a big difference in drop off in talent, in my opinion, when you look at Journey Brown opposed to Trey Sermon. But this could be a very, very good thing for Sermon if he can go out there, command the bulk of the carries, and show a skill set that will allow him to maybe sneak into day two of the NFL draft if I were predicting and projecting that right now. I see him as a fourth fourth or fifth round pick right now at the moment, but this is going to be huge for Trey Sermon. So big time boost, big time stock up. We'll be paying attention to 
everything that happens at Ohio State because there are a ton of players on that team who are going to receive a boost from this season uh, actually continuing from the Big Ten. And we'll talk about another one of those players a little bit later. We will not talk about Justin Fields. I think his draft stock was solidified whether there was a season or not. But Trey Sermon, big time stock up for him. Now let's shift from the running back position and talk about a quarterback where this class of quarterbacks, the elite guys are elite. After the big three, after Lawrence Fields and Trey Lance, I don't know. It's uh, it's a crapshoot. You got Jamie Newman. You have Brock Purdy who looked bad. Chase Bryce has talent. We know what David Cutcliffe is able to do with quarterbacks uh, at Duke. Mac Jones from Alabama, maybe. I don't know. JT Daniels, if he comes back, plays for Georgia and plays well. So there's a lot of room there for a quarterback to step up. You got Kyle Trask at Florida, but Tanner Morgan, the quarterback from the Minnesota Golden Gophers, big time opportunity for Tanner Morgan, who looked pretty damn good last season. At six foot two, 215, 66% completion percentage, 3,200 passing yards, 30 TDs, and seven interceptions. And not only is Tanner Morgan coming back, but he's getting his best or potentially getting his best offensive weapon back in Rashad Bateman, who went over a 1,000 yards last year. So we can already pencil that in and lock that in once again, maybe even in an eight-game season, depending on how how they come out gunning. But this is a big opportunity for for Tanner Morgan to put himself in the conversation of being a day-two pick in the NFL draft. He has arm talent. He has the tools. He's got enough mobility to avoid and maneuver in the pocket. You're not going to confuse him as a dual-threat quarterback, but he can move. I hate statutes. I, I just don't I think the game is evolving so much that we just don't want statute type quarterbacks in fantasy football so this season coming back is going to be huge for Tanner Morgan now he has another season of eligibility left but if he can go out there and throw darts can have a high completion percentage just like he did last season as a sophomore you know we could be talking about Tanner Morgan I've seen some mocks I've seen mocks with Tanner Morgan at the end of the first round. I mean, that's 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 really going out there. That's that's putting your balls on the table right there. I don't know if I'd go that far and say first round pick, but when you're talking about second round quarterback, absolutely. I definitely think that's within his range of outcomes with the weapons that they have on Minnesota. This is big for us in super flex formats because if you miss out, let's say this, if you don't have a top five pick, top three pick in your dynasty leagues in 2021, you will miss out on the top three quarterbacks. So you got to start thinking about, damn, is it Kyle Trask? Is it Jamie Newman? Is it Tanner Morgan? Big opportunity for Tanner Morgan. Excited to see what he can do this season for Minnesota. All right, let's head back to the Ohio State University and talk about a wide receiver, Chris Olave, getting a lot of love, a lot of love. He will be Justin Fields' number one target. He is a very, very good route runner, able to create separation with explosiveness and speed. He's 6'1", 188, looks a little small on tape. He reminds me of Devin Smith, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I believe Devin Smith was a second-round pick of the New York Jets a couple of years ago or some years ago, but he really reminds me of Devin Smith when I see him on tape. I'm not the biggest Chris Olave fan, but it's hard to ignore a lot of draft experts who have him being mocked in the first round. I've seen him to the Saints. I've seen him uh, late to the Kansas City Chiefs. I've seen mocks with Olave in round one. Therefore, we have to pay attention to a player and prospect with his talent and skill set. And last season, he had, what did he have? Over 800 yards on 48 grabs, 12 TDs. That's, that's insane efficiency. That is insane efficiency in production from a player who was not the focal point of the offense. It was Fields and J.K. Dobbins. So this season, coming back as Justin Fields' primary weapon on the outside, knowing that Ryan Day offense, understanding the scheme. Yes, they brought in some really talented freshmen. I, I'm excited about Jackson Smith. I'm excited about Fleming. I'm excited about Mookie Cooper. Crazy offseason. He's going to rely on what he knows, which is Chris Olave. So he's going to have a chance to put up some pretty big numbers. So Chris Olave, another one of those players, when you're talking about rookie draft picks, I don't think there's any way he falls outside of a top 20 pick in dynasty rookie drafts given the draft capital, given his production, given some of his age-adjusted age 
metrics, Olave is going to have a very, very good profile. I believe he has a breakout age around 19 years old, which, you know, historically breakout age plus draft capital equals a higher hit rate for fantasy football success. So he's going to have those sort of things working in his favor. Doesn't matter if I personally like him or not. I personally think Rondell Moore is the best wide receiver in the 2021 class. But if he's not drafted in the second or third round, which won't happen, but if that were the case, then you have to adjust. What kind of damn analyst would I be giving advice if I didn't adjust for what actually happened? So Chris Olave, big time, big time opportunity for him with the Big Ten coming back. Now, the final player that I want to touch on, the final guy that I want to touch on, I've been beating the damn table for weeks now, and I'm going to continue to do it because nobody's talking about it. If I asked you who's the biggest beneficiary of this season coming back, I'd give you a hundred bucks and you couldn't guess the player. I'll tell you the position running back and you couldn't guess the player. I'll tell you what state, Michigan, and you couldn't guess the player. It is unequivocally Chris Evans out of Michigan. Chris Evans is back. Chris Evans is good. And there are people. I know some people. I know people who know people who know some people who have Chris Evans rate, rated very, very high amongst 2021 eligible running backs. Chris Evans from Michigan started off his Michigan career as a freshman. Really, really good. Sophomore season. Yeah, junior season. He was suspended, academic issues, didn't even play. So there were, there was some thought that he wouldn't even come back. But Harbaugh and, and Evans, they worked it out. He wanted to be there. Harbaugh wanted him to be there. And every single report that you see about Chris Evans is he's not just coming back to be a role player. He's coming back to work in conjunction with Zach Charbonnet and Hassan Haskins. Do it this what you will. Do with this what you will, but I've even seen Matt Milner and a couple of his recent mocks have Chris Evans as a day two pick. Evans is talented. He's explosive. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. He's got the size. Doesn't have a lot of wear and tear on his body. I'm just letting y'all know, if you're in Debbie Leagues, if you're in Campus to Canton Leagues, or if you're thinking about some of those seconds and thirds that I keep telling you to get for 2021, Chris Evans, we are going to hear this young man's name called day two of the NFL draft. I'm putting it on paper right now. Receipts have been taken. Chris Evans is going to be a fast riser throughout the pre-draft process, throughout the combine process, and his ability to play this year and what he can show, his skill set, is going to put him on the map to be drafted a lot higher than people are thinking about or talking about right now. So when I'm talking about one player this college football season that my eye will be on more than any other player, any other player, Chris Curry is next. But any other player, it is Chris Evans, the running back from the University of Michigan. That's the show. That is it. The Big Ten is back. Got some other good stuff coming this week. I appreciate you dropping by, checking out the content. If you want more exclusive access to me, the rankings that we talked about, all kinds of cool shit in the Discord, the best damn Debbie Dynasty community on the planet. I promise you, you you will not be disappointed. Patreon.com forward slash all gas. Smash the subscribe button. Like the video. Listen to the pod. Watch the YouTube channel. Go out there. Trade for Christian McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley. Appreciate y'all checking me out. Hustle. Motivate. Be great. I'm out.